Hello everyone and welcome back to this week's rather short Hard to Find 4 Dev Diary. Today we're going to be discussing part 2 of the Officer Core Dev Diary that we saw last week. It's going to be a short one but hopefully it explains a lot that we missed last week. So without further ado, let's take a look. So last week talked a lot about how the Officer Core was going to change the way that leadership and advisors worked with its new focus on characters. Although we're not quite sure how it's going to work in practice, that was the core focus. This week it's going to be discussing how the new officer call screen is going to directly affect your military with some special upgrades you can get as well as some bonuses you can unlock, some of which are country specific. And so we begin by finally discovering what those three buttons were under each of the different subsections of the officer call screen. They are the officer call spirits. So as far as I can tell, the officer core spirits are going to be a new way of adding additional buffs onto your different divisions. I think of them as something similar to how equipment designers can work, where they give you a specific minor buff relating to that specific equipment designer. I think these are going to be also national based as well as ideology based, and you can customize them to specifically focus on what type of division you're going for. The dev diary itself keeps things pretty vague, not describing what a lot of the spirits do, but we do see Elevated Engineering Corps. So far as we can see, Elevated Engineering Corps is going to be a Spirit of the Army, which is the central button in Army Command. Here it gives you Engineer Company Unit Design Cost and Engineer Trait Experience Game. These may appear some obscure buffs, but don't worry, they are explained a little bit more as we go further down the dev diary. In the image we also can see some of the other spirits of the army you can get, including State Serves the Military, which feels like a sort of dictatorial kind of focus. Um, maybe it's a spirit for German Reich and Italy? We can also see Proper Heritage, which is a man stroking a horse. I wonder if this gives you a big buff to cavalry, although I'm not really sure why you'd want to focus on cavalry in the world wars. They were sort of obsolete at this point, but... Hey, I mean Mongolia's got to win a world war somehow. The dev diary goes on to say that these specific officer core spirits also allow for you to engage in previously difficult to do historical moves. In the example they provide, they show that how previously it was difficult to use your capital ships as surface raiders without screens, but now there is a direct spirit you can select called surface raiders, which makes this far easier. In the second example they give, we see in the State of Division Command, you can put more emphasis on the type of tactic you're using with Maneuver Warfare, which gives you a very minute buff to speed, but more importantly, the tactic chance of you doing an unexpected thrust goes up. So tactics are the different types of maneuvers you can do in battles between different tiles, and the chance that this particular tactic will occur has gone up. So the final category they talk about under the Officer Corps Spirit is the Spirit of the Academy. So what the Spirit of the Academy does is it directly affects the chances of getting different traits on generals, something that previously relied heavily on re-rolling generals for political power. So in the example they've given, you can see that the Engineering Schools gives two specific buffs, the first one being Engineer Trait XP Gain which means any time you would have got Engineer Trait for a specific general that you are levelling, you now get 20% more, meaning it's even faster to get the Engineer Trait on your generals. The second thing it does is it gives you a 50% chance that any officers you hire have the Engineer Officer Trait anyway. So yeah, it's massively about specking into and making sure you get these so that when you are rolling for generals, there's a higher chance you'll get them. If I were to make a bold guess about these other spirits of the Academy, I'd say Bold Attack and Tenacious Defense were increasing the chances that you'd get Brilliant Strategist and Inflexible Strategist on your Generals. As far as the other three are concerned, I'm not 100% sure. I, I guess Inventive Leadership could involve Harsh Leader, but I'm not sure. Tell me what you think they could do and what traits you think they increase the chances of you getting. Now the next part talks about something very interesting and that's that new spirits can be locked behind political ideology or doctrines. So that means that the previous engineer officers that we saw on the previous spirit of the academy has been replaced with the queen of the battle. I'm not sure what ideology or doctrine you need to unlock that one, but again, it's interesting and I could certainly imagine that some specific doctrines and spirits you require could be an interesting combo. Again, I'm just thinking about Mongolia having some massive cavalry-based officer core doctrine. 
Please, Mongolia, your time is now. The final part of the dev diary talks about preferred tactics. So I was sort of right in my assumption that the bottom and the top right was to do with tactics. However, it has a much more interesting option because it allows you to select which tactic you would like to increase the chances of happening in combat. This is really good because if you've built your divisions specifically around something, let's say lots of tanks to do blitz, then you can directly select blitz to increase the chance that it's going to happen at the cost of command power. It's also really good if you're trying to spec into getting a specific situation to occur, like especially on like a defensive back foot and you need to proc a certain stat because you're buffed out in that particular stat, I could definitely imagine that the tactic preference could be one of those slight edges it gives you. And that in total covers most of what there is to say about this week's dev diary. I did say it was pretty short. The final note is that of course this screen does tell you which of your tactics you have unlocked, so you'll be able to cover them and look through them to maximise your efficiency, picking between which spirits you want, which tactics you've unlocked, and maximising them together. With all that being said, there are a couple of comments I just want to pick up on, because the comments are always the treasure trove of information. So one question I saw was asking if there's an example we can see of a spirit that is locked behind a specific ideology and doctrine, just for clarification. And we saw one here with the Bureau of Ordnance. It's a USA unique spirit, which means that spirits can also be locked entirely behind one particular country, which was the clarification I was hoping for. What's really interesting about this for me is I'm just thinking about how the Swiss certainly deserve to have their own specific branch of military spirit, I mean, their whole neutrality, but also ensuring that the entire population is rigged for war, feels like something that deserves its representation in this particular system, a very specific military spirit. They're also covered in mountains, which might be worth a spirit in and of itself. And again, we see another example, this time of an ideology-locked spirit, and it's for communism with ideological loyalty, represented by a framed portrait of Karl Marx. The buff you get with this one is encirclement penalty is down by negative 10%, so when those pesky Germans are infiltrating the Soviet Union, you should be able to mount for longer if you are encircled to make a counter-offensive and unencircle any encirclements that you may have accidentally found yourself in. If I was to come up with an officer corps spirit for the Soviets, I think mine would be something to do with uh, reducing the lack of equipment debuff, so that if you are lacking equipment, it's not as big a deal for the Soviets. Representing a slight amount of historical accuracy, but perhaps a little bit too close for home for an actual game. And that covers everything we're going to talk about this week. So as I said, rather short, but we soldier on, waiting for the Soviet dev diary. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you found this somewhat informative. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.